Welcome to the next chapter. So in this chapter, we will talk about data monitoring and analysis. So let's look at the four words. So this document describes how to obtain valid information by technical means and analyze the information to locate security risk and threats. Data can be collected from network devices or from terminal system that provides services. Data monitoring and analysis can review network security risk and strengthen the network. If a security event occurs, data monitoring and analysis help rapidly locate the threats and to provide support for defense and investigation. All right, so I think uh, it's very straightforward. So let's look at the objective of this course. So upon completing this course, we should be able to learn to describe the technical means of data monitoring and analysis, describe the data collection process, and to use a technique to locate uh, threats. Okay, so here we will, the first two parts we will talk about the data monitoring, uh, proactive, and also the uh, passive collection, and also we will talk about the uh, data analysis. So first of all, proactive analysis. Okay, so proactive means uh, before the attacks happen, uh, so we evaluate the network and also we try to rectify, identify issue and also to s fix the problem or to strengthen the networks. Okay, so this is like before things happen, uh, we constantly uh, try to uh, scan the network to see what are the, the problem. The following figure shows security assessment method. Okay, so later we we'll talk about a couple of methods to perform proactive analysis. So first of all, it's called security scan. Second method is called manual audit. The third method is penetration test, and the fourth one is questionnaire, and the fifth is the uh, interview survey. So let's talk about the first one, which is security scan. So what is the objective of security scan? Now security scan is using a scanning analysis and assessment tools. So by using a tools to determine the network security vulnerabilities of a target system. Okay. So with the help of the third party tools, we can actually help to pre-identify what are the potential risk or the potential problem. So the contents are typically like uh, what are the ports which is enabled by the uh, destination IP? Okay, and uh, uh, what are the weak passwords? Okay, so some of the uh, analysis tools, uh, the scanning tools that can actually help to scan the internal system to find out what which password is uh, weak. Okay, and also we can also try to perform the SQL injection vulnerability test and also cross-site scripting or sometimes we call it XX, XSS vulnerability test and also the output uh, typically are the result generated by the scanner so let's look at some of the tools some of the scanner tools which is quite popular in the industry okay. now bear in mind these are the tools that also be used uh, typically by the uh, cracker or the hacker and to look at uh, to actually try to find the vulnerability uh, of our network or our PC. Okay. Um, so here we have uh, different types of uh, scanner. So first, the first one is called the uh, port scanning software. So this kind of software is basically to do port scanning. So for example, super scan and also the nmap. So it depends on what kind of operating system that you are using. So for example, super scan uh, primarily uh, designed for Windows user. So this is a, to provide uh, the following function. So first of all, this software uses ping to check whether the IP addresses are reachable. So this is usually what the, the first thing that a hacker will do. So they will check who are, which other PC which is available. And after that, they will check the service types provided by the target computers. 
so which in other words means the ports which is opened up by the target computers and also to check whether the target computers is a certain scope uh, online or check the ports which are on the target computers now nmap pretty much does things which is quite similar but the nmap is primarily uh, designed for Linux operating system so this is a network scanning and sniffing toolkit uh, for Linux uh, basic functions include check whether the hosts are online similar like the super scan scanning host ports quite similar sniffing the network services provided okay so again is to also check the ports and also to see what kind of network services uh, what kind of web server for example provided by port 80 you know and also to verify the operating system used by the host and uh, they will actually use some sort of a fingerprint identification to try to recognize is the is the destination machine uh, running on Linux or is running on Windows if it's a Windows what kind of version Windows and Windows Server or etc etc now the next one is called the vulnerability scanner uh, so one of the example is called the Sparta you know sounds like the movie yeah so this is an integrated uh, uh, software into Kali Linux and this is to detect uh, the enable services and the ports and also try to crack this software also tries to crack the username and the password of the application using a dictionary attack so this software has the capability of doing that so the next one is called the app scanner now app scanner one of the popular software uh, the tools is called bird suite now this is also uh, another suite which is uh, quite popular in, uh, in within the Kali Linux and uh, this is an integrated platform to, to perform penetration tests for web application it includes a wide range of tools and also relevant interfaces to speed up the attack on the application now, we'll look at some of the examples in the next few slides so let's look at the first example of the super scan so this is a, a typical interface of a super scan uh, is used to scan the web server in the lab environment okay now you should actually use this to test within your own environment so these are some examples so for example you can type in your IP address or maybe you can put in a range of uh, those servers that you want to perform the scan and after that uh, you can click the start scanning button and after that uh, the uh, this software will start perform some scanning and will try to detect how many ports are open and also you can look at the uh, uh, if you go to the tools uh, tab over here and you can actually find out more even more uh, kind of tests that you would like to perform to come up with the uh, result okay so this is example uh, that the system actually detected the web server running by this website www.blog.com is actually running on Microsoft as web server okay so this is the uh, um, another uh, on the on the on this tab we can actually click on the uh, view HTML result and this is what it looks like okay so it will appear uh, it will actually open up your favorite web browser and uh, it, the result will be displayed uh, and the, in the HTML format and you can of course export it out into PDF or whatever uh, format that you prefer now the next one is called the nmap okay so this is a, a very typical start menu from Kali Linux or maybe any kind of Linux distribution which you can also install the nmap um, so nmap actually has uh, uh, it a, has a base command and also there's something called the nmap-fe which stands for the nmap front end so this is the uh, the front end of the nmap so you just click on application information gathering and you should be able to see the, the software and this is the example of uh, the command line kind of uh, nmap now nmap uh, so first of all if you do not know what kind of options to run uh, with the nmap you can always type like nmap dash dash uh, help and uh, the system where you the, the command where actually shows you a couple of a lot of options that you can perform using the nmap command so the syntax are very simple first of all you need command then you need to specify the 
types of the scan that you want to perform and after that followed by the destination IP. You can specify a single IP or you can specify a range of the IP. Now this example minus S with a S is scan, uh, capital T stands for the TCP. And uh, as opposed, you can also type like minus S followed by the capital U to scan for UDP ports. So these are some of the examples that uh, the result that after the scanning. So from this result, you can roughly see that uh, this server actually open uh, has uh, a DNS server running. It has the web server running, which is his, uh, port 80, and also it has the uh, the it has the um, the file servers, file services, Windows file services run, or maybe we call it the CFS, and also the 3389 is about the remote desktop connection is also opening and the next one we can use the next tool is called the Sparta and so Sparta it belongs under the uh, vulnerability uh, analysis okay so you can click on Sparta example and Sparta and uh, same, after that you do the same uh, scanning to the, uh, to whatever destination and after that Sparta will try to try to penetrate into the uh, uh, into the into the application so on the sparta page add the address segment or host to be scanned the sparta result shows that the port and the apps enable on target host as well as the operating system being used by the host okay so here are the example microsoft windows microsoft windows and the ftp server is actually running foxzilla and the operating system here is uh, Windows 2008 okay so the next one is called the burp suite usage All right so burp, burp suite sends requests to apps and uses payloads okay so payload means the data packet to verify the vulnerabilities now burp suites can effectively scan the following vulnerabilities so the first one is called the client vulnerabilities kind of a uh, the problem, okay, example like the uh, cross-site scripting, HTTP header injection, and also the operation redirection, and also we can scan uh, for uh, for the server vulnerabilities such as SQL injection, especially on the web server, and also command line injection, and also we can also try to perform a file search, okay. So this is the uh, uh, so these are some of the things uh, can be done by a burp uh, suite. So this is the example of uh, the burp suite with the scanner and after that these are the scanner result and we can actually collect all the files what kind of files which is uh, uh, which is actually hosting at the website. Okay. So this is the result of the uh, scan vulnerability details. Okay. So here are the example. So let's say this is the website, and then after that you can see that the uh, the password field with, with automatic autocomplete enable, and then we can actually configure to set it uh, the severity uh, to a high. So Burp Suite has the has the capability to actually uh, log into the page and to try to penetrate uh, or try to do the uh, password cracking. Um, okay, the next method is called the manual audit. So manual audit is complement to the security scan. Um, so it requires no software installation on the target system and does not affect the running status. It is useful for important holes that do not allow software installation. Okay, so some of the uh, machine which is quite sensitive to other operating system to other software, and uh, so sometimes we have to depend on the the manual observation. So the method is actually a security specialist manually inspects the target system including the whole system, the service system, database, network device and also security device. So you have to run a lot of a couple manual commands or maybe click on a couple of uh, pages or screen to detect the vulnerability. So the following items can be checked uh, may vary according 
according to the target system. So for example, latest patch installed or not. Because sometimes it, a lot of uh, software, they will automatically check for the latest software updates and it will actually prompt uh, the, uh, the user to update. So sometimes the user ignore it. And so by looking at the, uh, uh, by manually perform the check, we can actually tell there is there is uh, latest software and service minimization principle use or not uh, or maybe uh, and also the unnecessary services ports are they enabled or not so typically a, a good recommendation is to turn off those unnecessary services okay and also the firewall configuration policy uh, is it configured the right way or is it a complete firewall configuration yes or no Alright, so the next uh, method is called penetration test. Now, penetration test is carried out as a part of the external inspection. Now, as opposed to the manual audit, uh, manual audit is the internal inspection, auditing, and this is the external inspection. Now, this test is an attempt to evaluate the security of the operating system and also the network services by safely exploiting vulnerabilities from external. So that means we actually use another machine to perform a penetration test against the uh, the target. Okay, so the process as the penetration process uh, is as below. So first we collect and analyze the information about the target, and we make a penetration test solution and a preparation. We're gonna prepare what kind of test that we want, we would like to perform, um, and also. Uh, what kind of impact it might happen uh, to the uh, production server or maybe sometimes we would recommend to perform a pen test during an off-peak hour so after that perform a report and analyze information and after that implement the privilege escalation and penetration and after that we will perform a study penetration test result based on the result we study the, the, re uh, uh, the, the test and also to create a test report okay this is to to look at the uh, you know uh, so let's say we have a test report before and after or maybe uh, we have a quarterly uh, penetration test report so that we can observe uh, from quarter to quarter and after that if there's something uh, uh, something suspicious happen we can propose a security solution to fix the the problem so next we have uh, questionnaire. Now questionnaire is basically uh, as as an ordinary questionnaire. It's a, just a piece of paper which we actually start to put some question there, and also to to provide the answer A, B, C, or whatever, so that we can send the uh, survey to, for example, network and uh, system administrator security administrator technical director and etc etc and then so these are the some some kind of questions that we can uh, provide uh, for example does the network administrator recommend changes to the configuration to the network system okay yes or no are there regular audits and check on important servers and routers running on the network yes no etc etc okay <coughs> now this sorry now the survey scope is to to check on services, assets, threats, and vulnerabilities from the perspective of a management. And also the question asked now should be integrity, specificity, simplicity, and also consistency. Okay. So after that, we have the last type of uh, test we can do is to perform an interview survey. Now interview survey will be um, it's like an interview, person-to-person uh, uh, -person conversation rather than the questionnaire. It's just uh, to write down on a piece of paper. So the audience are typically, again, system and security administrator, technical director, network administrator, uh, network system administrator, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So the interview topics will totally, uh, normally will be from the questionnaire result, okay, from the previous uh, slides and also to obtain the management enforcement details and also ask for user opinion and also the commands so these are some examples like 
um, does the company have a systematic unified security strategy okay so then we will actually look at how the uh, uh, security administrator how the person will be able to uh, uh, to to answer the, the question is the security policy is the security policy details to the collective requirements of all expect of information security so again yeah so the answer is very subjective it can be yes it can be no it can be why or we can actually elaborate from the question so this is what we call the interview interview survey so those are the uh, data uh, monitoring so next we look at the uh, passive collection now what do, you, what do you mean by passive collection? Now, passive collection means after the attack occurs. This is after. Okay, so earlier slides we talk about before. This is after. Now, user must collect data, analyze attack method, and also the vulnerabilities, and also to try to, try to rectify the situation and to minimize the impact. So these are some of the data collection method. So first of all, Okay, that's our collection. We can actually perform packet capturing. Okay, so later we talk about some of the commands or maybe some of the tools. And the second thing is we can also perform what we call port mirroring. Or maybe we can also perform something called the logs collection. So in log collections, we have network device logs and also the operating system logs. Okay, so let's look at the uh, example for the first one packet capture commands right so this is the example of a switch which is in Huawei switch where we can actually type the command called debugging OSPF event so debugging as the word suggests is to try to debug the problem so problem has occurred and we try to understand what happened okay and so here we can see we can observe there's a down to init init to two-way init to uh, two-way to x start X start to exchange and etc etc so from the logs from the debugging logs we can roughly look at the uh, the status of for example in this case OSPF routing protocol and also we can uh, inspect uh, debugging OSPF packets so packet is about what kind of packets has been received by the OSPF and also the neighbor okay so we can also use tools like Wireshark Okay, so to perform the uh, uh, the collection of the, the packet. Now, usually Wireshark, well, we have to work together with the uh, the port mirroring function. So port mirroring function is something like we can activate one of the unused port in our switch to actually mirror whatever the content which is uh, the packet which is entering or going out from the from other ports and mirror a copy to the uh, we call it the mirrored port and after that the mirror port will then be connected to a PC or to a laptop which is running on the wire shark so, so this wire shark can then collect all the packets and then we will try to analyze the uh, result and from this analyzed result we can tell well, what went wrong what kind of packet that's supposed to receive and we didn't receive so this is the example of a very good uh, handshake of a, of a OSPF between two neighbors so this is the example of the Wireshark collection packet and so here we can un uh, we can un understand uh, from which IP sending to which IP destination what kind of packet is running but this is actually packet by packet okay we can also look at the uh, you know the, the details of the packet and uh, to try to understand the more detail of what is in the packet okay. so port mirroring is the one that we I just mentioned so port mirroring enables the device to copy the packets passing through a mirrored port and send them to a specific observing ports for an analysis and also for monitoring so these are the, the few words okay so first of all we call mirror port which is the, the source port 
and this is called observing ports so this is the one that I just mentioned that we can actually add in a laptop or a computer which is running on Wireshark and by the way Wireshark supports uh, on the uh, Windows, uh, Windows OS, Mac OS and also on the Linux OS so this laptop can be running on what kind of uh, the above uh, OS that I just mentioned and then uh, the, the mirroring will cons constantly sending a packet to the monitoring device All right. so the next method is we call the network device logs so this is example of a UHG 6330 firewall which is one of the Huawei uh, firewall device it supports logs and also reports when the hard disk is unavailable you can only view and export the system logs and also service logs so here's the example comparison between hard disk unavailable and hard disk available now when we mention about hard disk unavailable and available we literally means on the hardware itself uh, there is a hard disk slot on the USG uh, not all, for all the models so this is an example of the 6330 model that supports the hard disk slots so we can actually put in a hard disk or maybe uh, some of the flash card that once the system detected there is a there's a hard disk slots it will actually start to collect all the logs into the hard disk okay so here's our example before and after so before we can only see there is a system log service log alarm information but after we add in the hard disk we can collect so many other logs including uh, threads traffic url logs um, user activity logs policy matching logs and etc etc so firewall firewall logs format so these are the log formats supported by the firewall so first we have the binary now session logs are typically output in the binary format and consume few network resources such logs however cannot be viewed on the firewall you have to export them to the log server now later we talk about what is a log server and next, the next one is called the syslog now syslog is, is the standard uh, kind of a, a log format so this is uh, uh, we can actually set the session logs packet loss log system logs are typically generated into into syslog format and usually for syslog format is actually displayed in uh, plain text so we can export the file out we can actually use any of the text viewer like notepad to view the contents and the next one is called the NetFlow and the data flow. So the firewall can also export session log in the NetFlow formats to log to a log server for administrator to analyze the IP packet IP packet flow on the network. So this is more concerned about what type of packet which is flowing through the uh, the firewall. Okay? And also we have the data log which is service log uh, generated in a data flow format. Um, so that they can be viewed on the log server so this here is the example of the uh, system logs so we have monitor logs and after that system logs so you go to this system logs and here we can see uh, the uh, system logs are typically uh, they have uh, columns severe uh, security level log types the time the uh, log source is coming from uh, what kind of source and also the description of the log okay and this is the uh, service logs right so service log is about the uh, okay what kind of uh, services uh, being attacked so for example this is the uh, IP spoof attack has been detected and what type of the log is mentioned from here and this is the alarm okay so alarm are typically like we have the warning we have the uh, uh, we have the uh, critical alarm uh, for example like we have the uh, IP conflict uh, so this is when this is one of the very uh, severe okay kind of a uh, warning and all this will appear at the uh, alarm okay. so next is uh, we could also sometimes collect the operating system log for example Windows so to collect the logs from the Windows we can click on the start and then right click on the computers and we choose uh, manage okay and uh, we select uh, system tools 
uh, event viewer and also we go to uh, windows logs so here are some windows logs that are classified into now windows logs are classified into system logs application and security now the normal system logs will contain most of the uh, the system activities logs application is more towards the the application which is installed on the windows and they will start collect a lot of logs and security log is about the uh, the user authentication who logs in and who logs off from the system, who failed password, and etc. etc. Right, so here are the example system logs. Uh, it records events generated by the operating system components, including the breakdown information and data of the driver, system components, application software. So the location of the file can be found in this uh, directory. And this is applicable to Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Server 2008, 2012. And application logs are including uh, events, mainly about the program running recorded by application or the system programs. And this is the location of where can we find the, the file. And finally, we have the security logs. This is about security audit events, what is the login logs, object access logs, okay uh, process tracing logs privilege usage account management policy change and system events okay the file can be found under here okay so the next is that we can also look at the uh, location and we can also change so if you click on the uh, uh, the security logs we then go to properties or you can right click security properties and this is where we can monitor we can observe where the location is and we can also sometimes check the maximum set the maximum log size and also what to do when the maximum size has reached do you want them to uh, override the older event or do not override and etc etc so this is a log windows log and the event types so typically we receive like information type or warning as we saw earlier and sometimes we see error and successful audit and also sometimes we see a failed audit all right so windows log formats okay so so this is a typical uh, windows uh, uh, logs so let's say we click on one of the events here and you can see this is the header and the header is about okay what is this category about this is about uh, log off and uh, this is an audit successful that means somebody successfully logged out from the system and who is the detail the details of the user this is about administrator logging out the successful way 